you can have it over there. Is it gone? Uh, it should be gone. I wonder if I should hit refresh. Would that destroy everything? Would the world fall apart? So, to those on Facebook, we will be doing our best to get to you. Is it showing yet? Kaya, honey. We're, we're online, so I need you to hurry. Thank you. Okay, it says hey. we're live. Yeah, we're going, so. Hey, guys. So, here we are in RV. This is our, let's see, tomorrow's our first full week. Yep. I'm going to sit a little closer to the mic. Because I'm pretty sure that you can't hear me. Um, we are at an RV park that has Wi-Fi, but it means that we have an awful lot of freeway noise. So we will try to speak up, and we do need to turn on the um, chat box. No, I think it should be going. So we've got a couple people watching. Hey guys, chime in. Uh, say hey. No, we are already buffering. Ah, yay. Okay guys, we're going to turn down the stream. So we're going. There's Jay Walker. Hey. Um Okay, we're going to see what's going on that way if it's going to help us. Looks like we're going. So, Jay Walker. How does everything look out there? Are you getting a lot of buffering? Did it come in a little better? So, I'll wait for him to say something. Anyway, so, what we have done is we have gone to Paul over at Wheaton Labs and seen everything beautiful there, and we lost some footage. A lot of footage. Not a lot of footage, mm -hmm. some footage. Um, none of it with Paul. Uh, we lost the Ant Village footage, which was really aggravating. Um... And then we went to Esther's, which was super fun. We got to go visit them last night. And all in all, it has been a terrifying and really fun experience. The beauty of the little old RVs is that you can do all the work on them yourself. You don't necessarily have to go to a mechanic, and that's been a real blessing because... Um, Turns out our fuel pump isn't big enough. We had some of those passes that were very, very steep, and it was really scary. We were worried we were going to get rear-ended by a semi because we were going about 16 miles an hour uphill. 25. You think we were going 25 yeah, on Yeah, and we didn't have spots? a semi to worry about. He was on the downhill when I was going slow on purpose, but it's been fun. We are slow <laughs> and getting there. And going slow. So, okay, so everybody says that the buffering is good. No buffering. Good. So, it's nice to have bandwidth. <laughs> we are so happy for that. We had to go camping to get yeah, right to go out wifi. roughing it. <laughs> so, so uh, one fun adventure that we've had now is that we need to switch the girls on their bunks. Kaya mm -hmm. really wanted to be on the top, and Paige wanted to be on the bottom. But what happened last night was the Kaya in her sleep stuck her butt out of her bunk like in a crouch and <laughs> peed on her sister <laughs> yeah <laughs> on my arm and mom I... mom still thinks it's funny and I... I can just i didn't see it john heard it and jumped out of bed and ran to assist but i i just kind of laid there and looked at the ceiling and thought mm. yep yeah. that happened <laughs> um and it was landing right on me on my arm Hey, John Lord. Good to see ya. Ooh, Tommy made it. Yeah, hey, Tommy. Sorry. Oh, oh, I gotta get my shirt on. Speaking of, so, oh, sorry. Tommy, I brought this along just for you. So, that was our big adventure last night, and laundry on the road is incredibly expensive. It costs you about $3 per load, and we had two really big warm blankets that we had to just watch not watch, wash. We just had to wash both girls' blankets. Um, and one of them is still drying right now. Um, just keep putting quarters into it, trying to get it to dry. 
Um, let's see what else has been interesting. So everybody, we are in a 20 foot uh, Class C RV, and it's 1978 is the year that it was manufactured. So it is an old, old guy, very low gearing. And so our top uh, speed is 55 miles an hour. That's our top speed. It's, it's a little happier at 45. Um, but what's been nice is that with those hills, especially getting to Esther's, it was very rocky, very steep. Um, the the gearing on the RV was such that it didn't it didn't like it, hook, it didn't blink. Go, I mean, it's an off road beast. <laughs> um, let's see, has there been anything else? We haven't really done any school with the girls yet. Um, Need to get on that too. Reason being that getting adjusted to how the vehicle runs, getting adjusted to the roads, figuring out where we can camp, where we should camp, where we shouldn't camp, has kind of been a two adult thing. Mm -hmm. it, it's needed two people. Charlotte's hey, Park family. The, Charlotte's asking how the bunnies are getting along, and they are... They're at Esther's. Esther's, yes. So they are now at a nice stable home. And, uh, they took up a lot of space in the walkway, and we saw the girls weren't playing with them and that we were having a hard time keeping them dry and so we just asked Esther if she wanted more animals to take care of <laughs> and she kindly said yes She's, yeah um, can we hand wash small clothing items to cut costs we could if there was any way to dry them um, we do have the line in the back in the bathroom that we could hang things from um, the, the, here's the thing, the whole reason why we're in an RV where we can do laundry, we have to have Wi-Fi about every three days. The reason is, is I have these SD cards that fill up with this really important footage that I really want to show you guys, and going too long without putting those online to then make more space on my SD card is a really big deal. We probably just need to go get a hard drive. Um, but even even with the hard drive it makes me nervous to have all of our files in one place and so we're trying to find multiple places like maybe the cloud and a hard drive to yeah. and youtube once we get them uploaded to make sure we're not losing our footage and so if we're paying for staying at the rv generally it would be one load of clothing a week not a big deal right but because we had that accident last night with Kaya peeing overboard. Um, we had all the laundry we normally would have needed to do, plus two full loads of blankets because it's been in the 40s at night and it's been very cozy in here. We ha none of us have been cold. It's been very, very pleasant. But the the later in the year we get, and sometimes in those mountain passes, it it gets cold enough that I want to make sure the girls have really heavy blankets. And so, not having those blankets is not really an option. Very true. Sorry, guys, on Facebook, we're doing our best. We're just going to have to go off of my phone and put you together. So. Suburban Hillbilly. I love my family. We kill each other. Well, right now, it is a bit of an adjustment. We're right. actually we're having fun. I think what would make this more fun for us is when we've been able to stop in spots and go for a hike and be next to um, lots of trees and lots of wide open space for the girls to run in um, with a little bit of a walk down to the laundry facility and stuff like that. It's been really fun. Um, but our problem is, especially like we're on a little bit of a time schedule and, and for some places where it would have been really fun to stay longer, we couldn't because we were due to be somewhere else. Exactly. And so the we're trying to figure out how to do that how to how to decide we're staying here for this amount of time and then we're going to scoot to get to this next place with that we're supposed to be where we're supposed to be right. taking videos so yeah so other than the rush rush when we really want to take our moments you know it's, it's hey big bear it's been great so we trees here john. john lord do you have the online rv camp and truck Diesel truck stop ebooks. No, we should mm -mm. actually get those. That's a good idea. And mm -hmm. and Rebecca, is there anything you didn't bring that you wish you had? Yes. yes. Um, but the reason we took this initial trip because we're only going to be gone about two and a half weeks this time. We we went up north to see my sister and to see Esther and Paul. 
as a maiden voyage to see is there anything that's going to need to be done on the RV? Is there anything we should have brought that we didn't bring? And so right now we're just learning how to live in the RV so that when we make that longer trip down south, it can be cheaper. So um, our bi biggest expense right now is ga is fuel. Our, our top miles per hour is miles per, miles per gallon. Seven and a half. <laughs> Seven and a half Good miles stuff. per gallon. And yeah. so it's going to be worth it. I think I'm actually going to turn around and change the rear end gearing to something quite a bit higher. Might need to speak up, honey, and come closer. <sighs> we've got the we've got the freeway right next. So to us. it has four eleven gears, which is really low and really wonderful for hauling a big load. But we actually don't have that big of a load. I can't see your so I'm going to to get all techy geeky for those who know cars. I'm going to move it up to a three fifty four gear ratio so that we have a little bit better top end and hopefully better gas mileage because it spins without overdrive I'm going 3000 RPMs and only 55 miles an hour it's really exciting <laughs> and we can pass anything in the world up to 45 miles an hour and then they start passing us back and so. we are in Boise right now we are in Boise and I do not love Boise so very much um, noisy. I have never liked Boise very much. Rhymes with noisy. We are excited to get into Oregon and to get up to Washington to see my sister. We'll also be going to the Spinolution factory, which we thought was really fun. For sure. Yeah, I think it's going to take a while to get it adjusted to the closeness, Jess. Um, I enjoy how compact everything is and that there's not as much laundry, but I do wish that we we're finding free parking somewhere that um, was more scenic. We The first RV park we stopped at was amazing. It was beautiful. It was perfect. Uh, this is only our second one. And it's great. They've done a good job with it, but it is right next to the freeway, and the girls are really bored. And you are stacked in here. It's a whole bunch of little fifth wheels and motorhomes just crammed together. So. Um, um, let's see, Charlotte, somebody, what? Somebody earlier asked about sleeping, actually, and, and if it was difficult in a different spot. It's been spot. perfect. It's been wonderful. We have slept like we're out. Yeah, it's been it's awesome. It's been wonderful. Even, <laughs> even in this sort of noise, if you guys can hear the traffic in the back, it's it's been amazing. And Charlotte asked about the cooking. Um, yes. When we can stop to cook, it's amazing. Right. But we have been on the road so much. Um, just to get to where we were supposed to go on time because we're so slow mm -hmm. and we had to stop in Dillon, Montana to get two new wheels put onto the front of the RV which slowed us down um, and we were really scared when we first started because we thought there was something wrong with the RV just because it was we, it was kind of nerve-wracking to get it started and to figure out the RV itself and the how quirks, it drove the bumps, yeah. well and just like the rattles yeah what are the sounds what do they mean does it mean things are breaking down which it didn't it just we did need to put the two new tires on um, so we're we're going through a <laughs> worth of gas a day if we drive for about six hours let's see so BC truck says 355 rears got him tickets he was asking about 373s I thought about 373s but they'd only gain me about five miles an hour um, and so I think that since this has got a 440 big block in it, it's got enough power to be able to have those higher gears and still push all the air in front of us, I hope. So we'd be able to go up from 55 to 65 that way, 66 I guess. And Living on a Dime says we're talking about having our children live in, our teens live in an RV for their own apartment. I don't think that's <laughs> a know, bad that idea. Bad. On our property we had our woofers stay in our RV. And we fed them in the house and had a bathroom available for them in the house. And it seems to be very livable. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I will tell you, the one thing that really I struggle with in the RV is washing my face. Because I wear makeup for the camera, I, oh, it just drives, usually when I used to do this for a living, I would just wipe my face down with a wet wipe at night and it was perfect, it was good. But when, when you start to put heavy makeup into the equation, it's miserable. It grosses me out to have this stuff on my face. And I can't get it off well enough with a wet wipe. I want water, and I, 
I want clean water. So I'm thinking about boiling water at night and letting it cool down a bit to get my face washed. But um, that's the one thing I don't like about it. I don't mind not showering, but I, I do want my face clean. I mind not showering um, too. Yeah, we've had, Jess, we've had some really interesting people we've met. Uh, last, two nights ago, two nights ago we had some men that came in and, and visited with us and looked at how our RV was compared to theirs and it was pretty fun. And they were nice guys. They kind of had the same chassis with a different motor and it yeah. was a good time. Donna, I'm worried about the girls adjusting. They're so used to running around outside. Can't do that right. safely in an RV park. Honestly, I am having as hard a time adjusting to that as the girls. The easiest places that we've been have been the ones where they have a pretty good hill for us to go up and down to get our exercise to get anywhere and that has that was really nice or a tree house or a tree house something to to get outside and move around it i hate exercising for the sake of exercising and while you can get daily passes at local gyms and stuff like that it's still expensive when you're already spending thirty dollars to park in your rv park plus a hundred dollars in gas to get to where you're going when when you drive out plus the thirty dollars a day in food your living expenses escalate very very quickly it's much cheaper just to be able to park somewhere and live for a week and then move on which is why the hosting has been such a big deal we've had three hosts so far and they made a huge difference each of them only fed us one meal and yet that one meal made a huge difference in the fact that we could park there and sleep overnight was huge money saving looks like we're still gonna have a little bit of a buffering problem from time to time and it's back <sighs> now yeah it's back now so that's good to hear let's see too bad you aren't traveling through nevada right now burning man that would be interesting right. yeah um what did bc trucker say i've been asking i've been asked to wear makeup on camera and <laughs> light <laughs> hey BC Trucker, didn't we, didn't we do a, didn't we do a video with Tommy a while back? I, except for like the clown outfit that you kept putting over the top of your face, you looked just fine. Um, let's see, um, what else has there been? I, I miss my food storage and I miss my goats and I miss my animals that make us our food and I miss my garden, but that doesn't mean that we're not doing the right thing because, um, it is definitely a new experience um, working not with food storage. I, I find myself going through the grocery store like it's some kind of like adventure because I'm not used to going to a grocery store. I don't know what they have. And so going into a grocery store, I'm up and down the aisles like, okay, so they do this here and they do this here and this is where I can find that. And when I need this, I can find this. I feel a little bit like I'm scavenging in a grocery store because um, I'm just not familiar with it. And um, I find it really frustrating because now I finally have my pantry stocked. I, I had kept a significant amount of my food stores to bring here. And then it turned out that my husband offloaded it onto my in-laws, not recognizing that this little cache of, of things that I had for the yeah. RV was supposed to there, go with there's us. There's a whole story there, too. Hey, honey, what should I grab for my sister? The white buckets. Just whatever's up there. No, the white buckets. Just I go said, get it. Go get the okay. white buckets. So, doesn't... <laughs> I had this little stash that was put in a special spot so that we could bring it with us because it was the expensive stuff. It was uh -huh. the stuff like the coconut flour and the almond flour and that uh -huh. kind of thing. Um, but it didn't come with us. Mm -hmm. So now as we've gone to grocery stores, I've been building up my reserves so I have food storage now that we can cook. Right. So hi, Brooklyn girl in the Caribbean. So. Hey. Um, are we letting fans host? Yes, we're asking everybody to host us. Anybody that is willing Anyone to host wants us. Anyone wants to come by and say hi, we would love to. Please host all, us. All the way from, we, we just stopped with a lady in uh, Riggins. about the middle point. Yeah, 30, 40 miles out of Grangeville where we spent at the last RV stop. She just wanted to stop by for a couple hours. We stopped by, said hi, kind of caught up, and she gave us kind of her, uh, the background on the town. It was great, and it was wonderful. So whatever you guys... Uh, you know whatever is good for you guys we're just happy to see you what what it so. what it comes down to is if you're willing to host us it you can tell us how long we can stay or how long yeah. we can't stay and we don't need hookups yeah. we don't need hookups we have a solar panel that um, mr. the kid gave us that we have attached on the top of the RV so that we can do our phones and stuff like that um, what we're trying to do is find really amazing places to take videos around you and um, if there was, if, you know, 
it's it's a lot more fun for us to come and hang out with people than just to be isolated in our little RV somewhere. And more than that, it cuts expenses down so much. We, we Tree Bonsai is giving out our website to contact the host. There's actually a quicker one. Uh, it is to email us at dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com. And, but if and you go to our website, it also has our email. Yes. So if that's easier for you. Yes, exactly. And thank you, so. Bonsai. Yeah, so dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com. Email that, and Tanji, who's taking care of that, will contact you for directions and, and that kind of thing. And she sends a letter that explains that we're not felons right. or sex offenders of any our, kind. We've had our shots, but not Except too many for shots. the golden showers, we might bring that kind yeah. of perverseness with us. Yeah. Poor Paige. Wow, it just went there. <laughs> Poor Paige. I feel so bad for Paige. What a horrible way to wake up. Oh. oh. Tommy says, let him know when we're coming to North Carolina. Oh, Canada. So. In the Caribbean. That would be awesome, yeah, Brooklyn right? girl. Um, okay, so Canada. We would love to get up there. Um, we want we to, but we don't have our passports. We have one person over in BC, yeah, but we can't cross the border. They yeah. Might, you know. It takes I three guess, months for us to get a passport. Yeah. Okay. So, three. Hey, Min Pan. Um, okay, sorry. So. So, that's what's going on. We did, we, we brought the bunnies as an experiment, but the minute it started to look like they were not as happy here as we wanted them to be, we found another home for them. And um, so, the only animal we have with us is our little dog at this point. We didn't bring the goats because the the frame of the trailer was not robust enough to drag a trailer with us and we were worried that they wouldn't be as happy you know <laughs> yeah see the mm -hmm. uh, golden shower just finally caught up on the comments for us and yeah oh it just so kaya last night stuck her little butt out of her bunk because she was half asleep and she thought she was on the ground or something so she braced herself stuck her butt over the edge of her bunk squatted down and, <laughs> and peed off the edge of the well, her Off sister the edge is, of her bunk in her, her sister's, sister's bunk. Below her. So, we'll say that again. So. <sighs> okay. Peed right on the page. It was horrible. Yeah, for her. Anyway. Oh, Indiana. So, where's the next stop? So, we are working our way over to her sister's, and it's actually tentative. So, we're trying to figure out. Actually, I guess that'll bring up a good point. We're is going there, through Oregon to Washington. Yes. Is there anybody along somewhere along I-84 between Boise and say Washington uh, that uh, wants us to stop by so and what was the question uh, I saw that what are we doing for income so we sold just about everything in our house before we came so that we wouldn't necessarily have to rely on the YouTube income but that is how we are our residual yeah, our yeah. residual income is our YouTube channel and then our Patreon account fills in the nooks and crannies there. So most of it is the YouTube money that comes in, but a significant fourth of it right. comes from Patreon. Yes. Uh, let's see. Gabrielle's asking about Western Washington. Are you talking about Spokane area? Uh, it is. It's all kind Yakima. of tentative from Yakima. Yak yeah, Yakima. from Yakima. From Yakima, it's all tentative. Um, we do hey, have Cockeye. to be back to do finish signing some papers on our house that we're renting out. Well, we don't have to be back, but, but we do have to clean our house out yeah, the rest of the way. Right. Because well, we'll sign it on they, they could have a bunch of the extra you know, nah, little that wouldn't gems be nice. that we have. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you, Bonsai. Yes, those are that's how to contact us. And, oh, let's see. Somebody was asking about filling them in on a golden shower. Um, we already no. did. I think they got that part. Google, I think I already told them. Don't Google it. But oh, yeah, don't Google it. This is a different kind of story. Mm, don't Google it. Mm. So, okay. See. We even went into Canada but wouldn't get in back in here. That could be... You know, Donna, that is a good point, and that might not be such a bad thing with considering the two candidates we have coming right. up. Very true. So, hmm. um, what do you think? So, what I have learned the most fastest best from RV living is that I like RV living when we're parked. And I like RV living when we're driving, but I like to I like to park longer than I like to drive. The driving is beautiful. The driving is super fun. Um, 
kind of but, constantly way, swaying back and forth in the drive. But unless you have like a super ton of money, it's yeah. nice just to park for right. a while. Um, Gabrielle saying closer to Seattle. You said Western Washington, didn't you? Sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, we can always hey, make a run. We could always make a run towards Seattle. Depends on how close you are. Uh, you know, it kind of gets crazy the closer you get to Seattle. Every other time we've done a vacation, we did eating out a lot because yeah. we were in a car. We were going there fast. We were coming back fast. This time, we haven't eaten out at all. We've done a lot of, of rotisserie chickens from the grocery store. Um, we have, we don't, in our RV, we don't have refrigeration. Uh, we don't have an ice chest or anything. We don't have refrigeration of any kind. And so what we do is when we get fresh food, we cycle through it. The oldest gets eaten first so that a roast chicken within 12 hours is eaten. So we don't refrigerate it. Our eggs are fine. We never refrigerate our eggs at home. So we haven't refrigerated our eggs this time. They're going on, they're going on a week in the fridge without in, in the fridge that doesn't work on no refrigeration they've been fine um, we have done some canned foods but it's all incredibly expensive it's so expensive compared to what you can do with dry goods At and all. a kitchen mm -hmm. you For know sure. it's been um, we this last time we walked out of the grocery stores with hundred and fifty dollars worth of groceries most of it was food storage stuff like uh, flowers expensive flowers Doug and Stacey are asking if we're on our way to the off-grid homestead. Not yet. We will be. Yeah, after so. we go home and we get everything packed. See, we have everything sold. We sold everything so that we would have backup in case the YouTube money tanked. And so we, we sold everything. We sold all our extra vehicles. We sold all of our animals except for a few of the goats. Um, we sold furniture. We sold gardening stuff. We sold everything. And now we just need to go back. We need to vacuum and shampoo carpets. And then we have a woofer coming on the 27th. And then we'll be living in our RV once our renters come in. So we'll be living in the RV while I, me and the woofer are just completely cleaning out the property to make it look prettier for the renters. So John Lord says if you have a new special driver's license, a new, it's a new passport driver's license for Washington, Idaho, and Border State options. Nice. That is an idea. Maybe we ought to go look into it because they just, here you go. Hey, so. Grandpa. Um, I know some great places to park out that are just, are free just north of Gardner, Montana. We should try that, too. Well, we could be going back through Montana. Yeah, we might be. Um, um, at this point, we feel like our head is turning inside out because we, we get into a place to try to park, and then it turns out something went wrong, and so we're driving around in town at four miles a gallon trying to find the place we were supposed to be going <laughs> and it's usually by a freeway so we can't get out and walk mm -hmm. and so there, we're kind of having a learning curve on an extreme level which is good we, we figured we would which is why we're doing it but yeah. it is extremely did I mention it's expensive <laughs> <laughs> to learn what you're doing when you're doing this um, thank you icky can did I say it right it, you know, and we would love to come to Ontario, um, but we at this point because we don't have, we didn't have enough time to get our um, passports. Right. Is a problem. Hilltop Farm says make our RV amphibious. You know, there is enough wood in this box; it might actually float. We could try that. Make it clear to our Southern Ohio. That is Sugar Run. That is very true. We see there's a lot of people in the Midwest mm -hmm. that are. Our subscribers and we're we're excited to go there but we're afraid of the snow what we're thinking of is that once we get colder like in November we need to be down in the southern state so we're not hitting snow because we don't want to play with snow on right. this vehicle yeah. and then once we get into April and start heading back that's when we'll hit the the Midwest mm -hmm. is after most of the sn heavy snow is gone Kimmy Jeans too. What is a woofer? Well, I'm not gonna quite explain that, but a woofer is. Uh, it stands for. What's a woofer? Never mind. Okay. Okay. Um, Worldwide Organization of Organic Farmers. So. Woof. I think it's opportunities. Yes. W W O O F E R for er. And Hilltop. Net. And Hilltop Farm, we just had uh, Shadell come and visit us like the day before we left, and her husband is Australian, and that was awesome. And and we would like to go to Australia, and yeah. we'd also like to go to New Zealand, yeah. but 
you know, we'll stick with one huge adventure at a time. Right. we got to stay in the States <sighs> and before we can go out of them and start baby steps, you know. So let's see. That's why I need to get those trucker and campground books. Yeah. I, I and we uh, we like Nomadic Fanatic. He, isn't he the alcoholic one? No, no, no. No, that's Tiny House. Tiny. Are you sure? Tiny House Customs. Yeah. There's one guy out there that's building a tiny house, and he drinks whenever he's mixing. Whenever he's working with electrical stuff, he seems to drink more. Which is hilarious. It's entertaining. <laughs> um, flying versus farm. And and you're in Nevada, and we are heading to Nevada. Yeah. As soon as we're done and we have the house wrapped up, you we're are, going directly yep, there. That's the first stop. Yeah. stops after we head head out. And so. Rebecca, didn't you already offer? Did you offer on our Gmail account? That's the thing is, guys, we don't know that you offered unless you go to our Gmail account, yeah. the dirtpetheaven at gmail.com, because there's so many different places that people are offering that we're having a hard time pulling them together and making sure that people got our yeah. responses. So in, in the subject line, just put something about host or uh, tour, and uh, we can, and that way that will discern the email that we can just forward directly to Tangi. And she is building what? the list and the map for us. Yeah, she is. What happened at the VA, Big Bear? If it has anything with the VA, then that's not good. Is somebody sick? Are you sick? Did we end up... No, right here. Where? It's just right there. Oh. Yeah, Big Bear, do tell. Or maybe that wasn't for us because it wasn't in caps. But Okay. Yeah, guys, we'll look at those. We'll get those uh, books for sure. We'll take a look at them. Yeah, prayers to Big Bear. Sorry, we're not really keeping track. We of haven't been was. online much lately, so we don't. We haven't seen anybody's live broadcasts or anything. We don't really know what's yeah. going on. Icky can off grid. Yeah, being up in Canada, I'll bet you guys get quite a bit of snow. We've got a fair chunk of it too, and there's no worries about uh, this thing handling in the snow. It's heavy enough, and we've got good tires now. But but it's scary. And it's there's no seatbelts. <laughs> I don't really like thirty below. Much less, whatever. What else you guys are doing? So, and so what it ended up happening in the end with the with the homestead was that the girl that bought chamomile, which that is a video coming up. That was a hard video. Um, I sold chamomile, and then afterwards, Melissa, the girl that bought her, offered to take the others for this two week jaunt before the renters got there because the renters want our goats as well. Right there, it is. Tiny House Customs. Yes, it's Dan. Thank you, Bonsai. That's who uh, manages to drink a little bit while he's doing electric, and it's fun. Ha have you shared? Have you shared being sick on your live broadcast, Big Bear? Yeah, Big Bear's not feeling good. <sighs> we do have our prayers for sure, but. Um, RVs do not use the best materials. That's true. And what right. we like is that we have an older RV, so it's not outgassing anymore. It, it's it, all the nasty chemicals from <laughs> the manufacturing of it are gone. About 10 years later, yes. Um, use rope. Use rope? What are we supposed to use rope yeah, on, Grandpa? Yeah, what are we Grandpa? talking about? That was 30 seconds ago, and now we've forgotten. We are very bad. Mm. Anyway, what are your electrical requirements for the RV? Okay, the addictive prepper. Thank you. So what we have is mainly all of our electricity is being used from the computers. We've got two laptops in here, and then we also have to charge batteries and phones. He did get sick during a live show. Oh, sorry. Um, so while going. she's typing, yeah. So we have that. We have LEDs for the lights except for two that I wanted to leave as incandescent. And so the inverter can actually power both computers. The problem is that it's uh, what's called a modified sine wave inverter. It's the cheap one. And sometimes that will mess up sensitive electronics. So we're a little worried about leaving this Apple you know it's a very expensive laptop to have it fry and so we don't tend to plug it in or we try to uh, at a minimum until we get onto actual power and then the video game starts and I have to go tell him to turn it off thank you girls um, 
So, yeah, the the only thing that really uses any electricity around here is the laptops and the phones, and the phones actually don't use that much. So, we're doing really good uh, with the, the kid gave us a hundred watt panel, and we probably only use eighty five at the most. So we're we're staying ahead and keeping the battery charged even with everything, you know, running. So let's see. <laughs> Minute man, I'm barely one step ahead from being where you are. Guess we got an RV. Well, you know, mm. if you have a neighbor that has one in his backyard. <laughs> yeah, that's how we go, got ours. Go offer to go offer to make a trade, and in his generosity. You never know. I mean, that was yeah. just, that blindsided us as wonderful as it was. Well, this one had sat in his back property for 15 years. He went and bought a brand new, big, beautiful bumper pole and hoping that his wife would go camping with him and uh, hoping that he could go camping, that they could go do this fun thing. And then they didn't do it. And so all at once, he started just giving away left and right all the yeah. vehicles that he had on his back property. Yeah. And when John came and had asked if if they if he wanted to trade, it just he happened was, to be right at that moment. It was right at that moment when he was already great. giving stuff away. So let's see, Teresia Smolovitz. 1978 yep. is the year. So there's no overdrive. It's a three-speed transmission and it's a 7.4 liter engine. So we get about seven and a half miles a gallon is the best we can get. Right now, we're going to. Uh, try and see if we can remedy that as we go along so Minuteman has a tent and a lean-to hey there you go and we just came from Esther's place they are in a a tent a yurt called? a yurt yeah. and it was pretty sweet and it was amazing to see their new house that is yes. a, a hand-hewn beautiful beautiful home oh, um, and they're gonna be using a rocket mass heater um, which is super, super exciting. And they're going to be using, a, I don't know if they're switching to a rocket mass heater in their yurt or just using the wood burning stove they've already got, but yeah. their place up there is really amazing. Yeah, it really is. They, they have complete off grid, on demand, hot water. It's just neat stuff. Videos coming soon. Well, and Big so. Bear, they just said um, that they're going to, that's their dream is to RV when they're empty nesters. And honestly, as empty nesters, I think this would be pretty cool. Um, it, it You don't walk over the top of each other when there's only two of you in here. Right. It's when you have four. Four, you're like just throwing elbows dog. to get everyone out of the way. <laughs> yeah, the four and a dog. It's definitely fun with the girls. I think they are frustrated with the lack of, of motion right now. And we haven't really figured that out. I'm going crazy with lack of motion. And I... This is the other thing is I I went on eBay and bought two pairs of pants that I knew would be cute and functional on this trip so that I'd look really, really professional. Turns out I packed the wrong ones that don't have spandex in them. And sitting just for this week of, of the amount of sitting that we've done compared to our normal amount of activity between the spinning wheel and the chores and everything. And anything that doesn't have spandex in it isn't going to fit me right now. <laughs> So that was another expense. I had to go buy a whole new pair of jeans. Love that cackle. <laughs> and I never paid that much. And then she glares much. at me. Did you see how she glared no, at me? No, I'm just laughing. <laughs> I never pay that much for jeans. I always pay. Always. I always get them used. And, and But I had to go buy a brand new pair of jeans so that I didn't look like some kind of horrible hobo. And uh, anyway. Uh, let me see. Hit, myself, Hit myself in the face with a hot iron today. Oh. I think he's talking somewhere. Oh. Um, lack of motion? Question mark. Yeah, exactly. Big Bear. We understand how that. Uh, you know, we're we're starting to learn that foreign concept about actually. I'm not gonna have motion. to like get out and do exercises in the morning. But for instance, when we're visiting, sometimes. They want to visit at a certain time of day, and so if your routine is to go out and exercise at this time, but you need to go and be somewhere with your host, um, or if your kids need you, or we we've just we don't have a routine yet. Right, Pamela Bocock, how long do we think we're living this way? Okay, so the plan right now is through the winter. We're going to head south through Nevada and then drop across east, and we'll end up eventually at just so Trisha's place. We're going to um, be with her for a couple months, and then... <gasps> Paul is on! Who? 
Oh, Paul, we hey, Paul. <laughs> I overalls. should. I should try overalls because I'm I'm getting a beer belly, even though I don't drink a lot of beer. Uh, oh. Um, let's see. So after Florida, we'll turn around and head north up somewhere around the east Appalachians, maybe, and then back west, and we'll make this big loop circle thing. So. Let's see. What do you mean? I don't understand. I don't know what Big Bear's saying there. <laughs> okay. That sounds awful. We've lost something on the feed. So you're in a tent, but you're using an iron to iron your clothing. Is that? Am I understanding you right, Minute Man? Or are they tongs? Like, what kind of iron? Like branding iron, clothing iron. If you're in a tent, that is amazing that you are concerned about unironed clothing. We John haven't Morris. had any motion sickness at all. Um, no, he's talking about getting your, your land legs after you get off of the American land yacht. Oh, ours so. doesn't rock that much. It's so small. Mm -hmm. It's 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 pretty it's pretty it's pretty. I've no I haven't even noticed any difference. No. Other than all. other than stuff falling off occasionally, and mm -hmm. that's always fun. So everybody. Paul is on here, and he was our first stop. He was the reason why we were in such a hurry, was because everything that I've ever done on my property was because Paul taught me through his podcast. So, if you guys like what I've done to my property, where it started out as a desert, and now it's this big, beautiful, fruit-producing place, go see Paul. He, knowledge he's amazing. amazing. And amazing. the videos that we have that we just took with him, the luxury shower that we put up, which um, works, by the way. Testimonial uh, yeah, right here. He took it. Hot it water amazing. and a lot of it. And it he's over amazing. at permies.com. P-E-R-M-I-E-S.com. Permies. And also richsoil.com. Um, in fact, maybe I'll put those in. Let's see. That's and different. all of my resources that I found that from my books I found because I had listened to Paul's podcast. So... We're going to have a ton of videos from him. The only thing we missed out on from his uh, visit was that we took Ant Village videos on my phone. And then my phone got reformatted before I got those videos off. And so we lost all of the Ant, Vill Ant Village, which just... It's tragic. Because there's amazing yeah. stuff up there that... You, you'll, well, we'll have to drop by again, Paul. <laughs> well, or I might, I might ask Paul if if they have a video or a picture on their site that I can steal to put into a video, so that people kind of get an idea of what they're doing because it was really fun, and I felt really bad that that I didn't get it off quickly enough. But Jesse Grimes on Patreon, uh, I am one of his patrons which is how I know about him. He's in the Ant Village and he takes videos of the home that he's building by hand on Paul's property. And so there's Jesse Grimes and then I know that they said that Evan, who's also an aunt at the Ant Village, um, Evan has an Instagram account and Kai, I'm not sure if Kai had an account. I don't remember if he said that he did or not, but um, so much going on at Paul's place. It's amazing. Um, sure. So John Lord's saying he doesn't. We don't. Yeah, you're right. We don't do 12 hours a day. I actually used to do that for my job as well. And I, let's thanks, see. Paul. In fact, BC's asking if I'm still a driver. No, I had to retire. Unfortunately, it just got to be too much with three three discs that just weren't going to recover much more. So we're hoping with a little less in the seat and a little more walking around, not carrying. And he's sleeping better at night, yeah. a lot better at night. So, Paul, then I will contact maybe Jocelyn and see if if there's a specific page that they would like me to steal it from. Because then I've already got a video made explaining the Ant Village and how much we loved it and explaining that we lost the we footage. Lost everything, yeah. Um, and, and maybe Jocelyn can point me to some pictures that I can use to just kind of point people in back in Evan and uh, Jesse's direction and, and Kai. Um, yeah, is, yeah, is Palmetto Paratrooper in the house? In the his house? Okay. Grandpa's farm. Oh, good. Five, okay, live later tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Alaskan time. 5 p.m. Alaskan time. When does podcast come out? We just barely got Wi-Fi again. It should be up on Monday. 
uh, for the podcast. So yeah, Paul and I did a podcast about residual income, which is the... They what? did a Braid Girls. It was so fun. Oh, yeah, an, should... an audio-only Braid right. Girls. <laughs> um, uh, and, and we did it on residual income, the way that we're able to just leave for six months and not worry about bills and where money is coming in. Right. And so if you guys haven't listened to the Jills of All Trades podcast, the one that will be coming up on Monday, if I can get it to Derek here pretty quick. Uh, Cinnamon's husband, Derek, is the one that uploads the podcast. So that's Jills of All Trades Podcast dot com is the website and if you go to iTunes it's just Jills of all trades and Paul and I sat and talked I went and looked at it and it, I was flabbergasted we talked for three hours I thought we talked for an hour mm -hmm. and then we went back and we looked at the footage and it was three hours talking about because Paul is the king of residual income and being a farmer it doesn't necessarily necessarily depend on a product that they're selling from their farm, but instead being able to share ideas and um, information and teaching people, which is what like Justin Rhodes has partnered up with Paul on permies.com and everybody out there probably knows about Justin Rhodes. They, so they're, they're business partners at this point and um, they do things differently. I prefer the way that Paul does it compared to Justin Rhodes. Um, but it, that might just be because I've listened to, to Paul for so long and, and uh, I feel like Paul just really gets down there deep instead of being shallow learning. The things that Paul talks about on his podcast are always very, very full of information and there's always something new that, I, that I've never heard of before. Like the poo, the the Willow Bank. The Willow Bank. The Willow Bank. Well, it's a, do, it's they, a, do they want that public knowledge yet? Well, yeah, I did okay. a video of it. Okay. I just haven't put it up yet. Their their Willow Bank, their outhouse, is phenomenal, amazing. It's like you're going on a retreat, like this lovely retreat to go potty, right. because it doesn't stink. You're There's going, no flies. You're going to the bank. You're going to the bank. You're the making Willow a bank. deposit. Exactly. For the willows. I wouldn't want to make a withdrawal. But he, he, the way that Paul does things is that everything comes from multiple directions for different reasons. And there, there's a lot of, of thinking and experimenting. It's, it's why it's called Wheaton Labs is because it is about experimenting until it works and finding better ways to do things that use less water that aren't expensive. Like he has a Wolfati that we built, or that, we not that we built, that we went to see. Well, it looks like we might be losing our stream, guys. It's starting to turn red for us, so keep us in the loop if it buffers or you lose anything, okay? Go ahead. Um, and so the Wafati is a sunken home that is then backfilled with dirt over the, over parts of it, and they're supposed to be like 100% climate neutral. I don't know I don't know how else to put it, but the, in the summer it's cold and in the winter it keeps it warm. Kind of like LDS Prepper does with his greenhouse and his venting, except this is passive and it was gorgeous. It was beautiful, but he has different versions of it as he improves upon it. Same thing with his rocket mass heaters. There's early versions and then there's the versions he's working on now. And there's so much innovation and the way that he funds all this is with his residual income that he makes online teaching people. I, I know, I'm on my soapbox. This is like my favorite Keep thing going. to talk about. I, I'm just watching the stream, make sure nobody ends up bumping. Um, it looks like, okay, no, sorry, one more side question for you guys. So according to the website, thehomesteadnetwork.com, where we get all of our show times, there's nobody on after us, is that right? So does anybody know? So go ahead and we'll, we'll talk later. Yeah. So. so so with the outhouse that Paul has done, it doesn't go into the groundwater and you don't have to ever touch the what has been deposited. Instead the willows that they have planted around the outhouse are what get to eat all the extra nitrogen and keeps it out of your water system, keeps it out of your aquifer. And just beautiful, just so pretty. Um, yes, the Wafati is an above ground structure, but has. has oh, and yeah, and the Wafati, we have videos of it, and it just blows my mind. And it's beautiful, is the thing. It doesn't look like a piece of trash that somebody just kind of cobbled together, and maybe it'll work, and maybe it won't. And Paul is looking for a family to live 
in the Wafati to test out the rocket mass heater versus the, the, the heat that is absorbed into the, the mass, the earth that is the Wafati to see do they have to crank up the, the um, rocket mass heater this year or will the building keep itself warm type of experimenting. So if you want free lodgings, he's looking for a family that will do this through the winter. But be dedicated to it. And stay for a year. Time. Stay for a year to, right. to really test the building, but you have to have listened to at least 200 of Paul's podcast so that you really understand his, his philosophy so that you'll stay, so that you really understand what Paul believes before you get there, So, because he wants people to stay and to be part of the community, not to just be kind of flying through by the seat of your pants and 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 uh, not feeling like it's a home. He really wants people that are hardworking to stay there and be part of the community, because that's what it is. It's it's not just Paul there, is, he is the Duke of Permaculture, but um, he, he wants people there that are passionate about the permaculture and I think he said that the actual building supplies that that cost them to go into this Wafati was two hundred dollars so to build a home for two hundred dollars he has the sawmill there on site a solar sawmill and we got video of that too it was amazing um, Am I am I going no, off onto my Paul's, rant? No, Paul's just mentioning where they are. They're in the like rock and roll theater mm. in the house, yeah. in the shop, in the office. Yeah. And now in the so I've got, I've got the so cabin, many. the butt warmer, and then he says, oh, and another in the teepee. And yeah. so I'm like, yep, yep, yep. We've got so many videos another to show from Paul's. Another one in the shower. Paul's. That's actually Because better. the point of what Paul is doing is he's trying to take it out of the corporate bigwigs the ability to take care of your family. He wants you to be able to build your home for a couple hundred bucks, to be able to create a rocket mass heater that will heat for a tenth of the amount of wood um, that you can build from natural um, materials that aren't going to be off-gassing into your home. It's all very, very all-encompassing. He's just about thought of everything and tried everything. Everything, and it's and it's about it being amazing. affordable and safe and independent of the crazy people that are out there that that run our world today sorry yep am i still no, on tangent you're, you're doing good and they're they're on my favorite podcast to start on if you're new to paul is the one about the bees about how to not use chemicals for your bees and that was a, a fantastic podcast the other one was um him reading and analyzing by tope was it Toby Hemingway? Toby, did I get it right? Hem Toby. Anyway, Guy's Garden is an amazing book. Those were the ones that I started on when I was first listening to Paul. And from there, started to listen about Sepp Holzer. A lot of his book reviews are very comprehensive as far as did it really give you the information that you wanted. Um, what are some of the others that I really liked? I just... Um, he has some podcasts that he that he did right after he did workshops to kind of explain what happened in the workshops and what they would do differently next time. We're buffering. Yay, yay, yay. Sorry, guys. We are still working on this, apparently. Even with the best high-speed internet, for some reason our encoder wants to throw us into a buffering loop. Every so often, and it just goes up and down. Yeah. Oh, and Paul does have so the last Kickstarter that Paul did, I participated in it because I wanted to know how to make a Cobb rocket mass heater. Um, and I had seen a lot of other people just kind of winging it and doing it, but there is some science to it. And if you want to have a good draft and you want it to be a safe material and you don't want to be having to tear it all down and put it back together. So we participated in Paul's um, Kickstarter this time around. And we just got the first video talking about how he... What, honey? Go ahead. Just read that one. Um, okay. So he his big test was that he put a rocket mass heater inside of a teepee over the winter and had a couple live in it over winter to see does it really live up to what you know everybody says that it's amazing and, and it will just heat you and keep you warm and you you won't have to use much wood and what ended up happening was it worked they lived in this uninsulated teepee in Montana through the winter at negative 26 degrees Fahrenheit 
and they refine it. It was the ultimate test. And so now he has that that Kickstarter that's finished. And his what are they called? The 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 downloadable, not the physical ones. The ebooks, the DVDs. No, the lot the, the inter, What is it called? The live streaming where they send it to you, but you don't get a physical copy. Downloadable. The downloadable. Okay, so I got the downloadable one, and I don't know when. Paul, did you say when you're the? I think the DVDs themselves aren't quite ready, but he has other DVDs of the of previous plans from Ernie and Erica on his site. Gotcha. And the thing is, there is science to it. If you if you don't apply if you don't apply what other people have learned, then it's not going to work as well. It's going to it's going to backdraft. Is that the back smoke? No, you'll have backdraft. It'll puff back in the air. And you'll have more problems with it if you don't learn from somebody who's actually in real life used one not the theoretical hey I heard somebody did this one day and this is how you do it instead of somebody that's built so many of them he has it down to an art okay just send us a message yes we will check Minuteman if you don't hear from us uh, email us dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com and we will do our best to get a hold of you okay thanks okay. Minuteman yeah so um, um, let's see bees Somebody, the bees, the bees know. What do the bees know? Everything you tell Everything, them. Everything, right? So, we have four minutes left. Does anybody have any extra questions before I go and start editing my fingers off to get some more videos up? Or it looks like we have a little extra time to kill because nobody's on after us, unless somebody can tell me if we have somebody else. But we got an extra free hour before Tech Talk with Big Family Homestead comes up. So, and we'll probably be able to watch some of the live streams tonight because we have the Wi Fi that's connected with the RV, so we'll be able to, to catch up. Yeah, and, yeah, see if Big Bear's doing yeah. okay. Yeah, Reverence happened. for Bees podcast because I think in that one you talked about your bee huts too, didn't you? Your movable bee huts digital download is and the digital really download. Good. So, anybody that the, the thing about the rocket mass heaters is, is that it birds it a tenth of the wood. And it heats your home better. Anybody that has a wood stove knows that it heats so much better than like electrical heat or forced air. It gets you warmer. But but the the rocket, the rocket mass, mass heater is a step beyond that because the rocket stove is super efficient. And when you add the mass onto it, on top of that, it means that the mass heats up from the rocket stove. And then it keeps putting off heat for the next however many hours. Um, and the way that Paul has done them, they're also beautiful. And so instead of it looking like a trash heap in the middle of your house, it is a point of pleasure to look at, just like your, your regular wood stove is. And it's what we plan to do in our house when we get, move into in our, our tiny, tiny house. house. Yes. Um, and, and Paul also has shippable, shippable cores. And I think that's the one he has in his living room is the one where you don't, it, you, it's removable. Does that make sense? So instead of having it put down as like mud and brick and masonry that's in place, this one is filled with rocks and it has a frame that the tube goes through. So it's it's amazing. It's super cool. Rain Country Homestead, thank you for checking in. Um, you know, we haven't even we haven't been around for a couple weeks either because we've changed from Sunday nights. So this is our new time now, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. And yeah, Tommy just said we are free for the next hour if we want to keep going. Yeah. So, guys, do you want us to keep going? Because now we just kind of have run out of our material. <laughs> I would just say anyway. watch for the videos. We're going to have a mixture of lots. We're going to have somewhere in the neighborhood, I think, of like eight or ten videos from Paul's place. And we'll mix that in with videos from our other stops so that we'll have all the amazing stuff going on at the Wheaton Labs. And then we'll have gardens along the way and tiny houses along the way. And then we'll throw in... And any of our stops that want us to video and say hi. And yeah. Yeah. So. And then uh, sporadically we'll have RV living videos. So yeah. we're going to try and, and mix it up so that... We're trying not to turn this into a travel channel. Yeah. Um, even though we are... Uh, that is a big part of our life right now. Um, we had... See you, Mother. I guess... Night Mother, many horses. Um, we did have a wonderful breakfast today outside of a reservoir inlet, just a beautiful creek with, you know, and the water's getting low. So we had the, the ambiance was just gorgeous. 
So let's see, this Paul person you are talking about. Teresa Smolovitz, thank you. It is Permies, P E R M I E S dot com is where to find him. But he's also on YouTube. He has YouTube yeah. videos. Um, if you watch his videos, my favorite one was The Respectful Chicken Harvest. Um, a girl that used to be vegetarian found that when she moved into the colder climates that she couldn't be vegetarian. It wasn't enough fuel for her body to stay warm and be able to still move and, and have a happy life if she didn't occasionally eat meat. And so that video is about this recent vegetarian woman, she's charming, um, butchering her own chickens and doing it respectfully so that they were not suffering and alarmed and the it it was extremely respectful and it, it made me feel differently about I wasn't doing as much butchering until I watched that video and saw the way that um, the way that she took so seriously the butchering of her animals but also admitting that she couldn't live without the meat because she lived in a colder climate and we live in a colder climate if you lived in a climate where there was abundant fruits and vegetables to eat all the time and and your temperatures didn't get cold that would be one thing to be vegetarian a lot of vegetarians eat all day long in order to have enough calories they eat at least every two hours that's what I've seen on the vegetarian channels that I've watched is vegetarians eat constantly well in our climate where it's cold you are working a lot to, to put up wood for the winter to take care of your animals and if you you know and and then when it and that's just in the normal you know growing season when you also get into the cold months if you don't have animal protein animal fat it, it can be and, and you want to be very active like we are because we farm I'm sure that it can be done I don't know anybody who's done it successfully as far unless they live some something of a sedentary lifestyle. Just um, kind of grazing, like our vegetarians at, in, on the homestead, just have oh, to be thank grazing you, Jocelyn. all the time. Yeah. Okay. So Paul is uh, Paul Wheaton Twelve is his uh, channel. Yeah. Is Paul's channel. So make sure to make sure to go check that out because he is. He, ch he chooses carefully the people that he has come on. I have never seen one where I wasn't really, really impressed with what it was they were doing with their lives. Uh, Miss Calamity, I should really start doing videos on that very question right there. Do you want right to tell there. them what it is? Um, she's asking, how are you managing crossing various state borders with weapons and carrying? The Idaho conceal carry license is good in 17 states the enhanced conceal carry is in 30 something um, and to get into the nitty-gritty I will be doing those I think on my channel I should actually start taking some footage so I can start doing that but so far we've been really good uh, with everything if not there's always other workarounds like uh, for instance Oregon if you don't have a conceal carry permit then they you just can't conceal it so you can carry it out unconcealed so it will be uh, let's just say in an open and even honestly more easy to get to spot should I need it but you know you just you need to research the laws for all the various states and be able to follow them is basically what is going other questions were did we get videos with Esther we did get videos did. with Esther, and my camera turned off in the middle of it, so we got to take another video with Esther. Mm -hmm. um, we got a video of her home, and the video that we made at her place was the pros and cons of building your own home, and talking about their experience that they're in the middle of, and my experience with my family, where my dad built our own home. And um, it really... Talking about it really harkens back. I'm sorry to keep going back to, to Paul, but when we went into the Wafati. Hey, Paul, did I mention cost, she was your super fan? It cost them $200 to make that because they had the sawmill and everything, but they had the labor from the woofers and from the ant village to put it together. Um, it's cost, it, Building your own home is expensive. And, and doing it as part of a community and doing it in these natural building methods uh, seems so smart to me because um, it either takes money or it takes time 
and unless you have a really well-educated community that can come together and, and help you build a home. But that was the topic we did at Esther's was the pros and cons of building your own home. Because a lot of times there's like a fairy tale idea around having this home that you built yourself and they, they can destroy a marriage, they can be very, very expensive, they can mm -hmm. be very time consuming, and sometimes it can be very hard to sell them afterwards because they're not to code. Right. But honestly, it's like um, everything building a house too, because you know if you want to do any sort of customization, we were looking at doing a monolithic dome, and good luck finding a bank that was going to do that because... Uh, so, I mean, there have been people that have just applied for 500 credit cards and got maxed out every one of these credit cards and then turned around and took a home equity loan because they could get a home equity loan on this monolithic dome that they just spent all the money from the credit cards and it's just some stupid, you know, you just have to ask permission. Um, the name of the channel was Paul Wheaton, P-A-U-L-W-H-E-A-T-O-N, Paul Wheaton. Um, and the other... The, the other channel is Paul Wheaton with a number one, two, number 12 at the end. Yeah, that's for Maddie Snuggles. So this is yeah. going to be 20 seconds to late. And it just went red on me again. So if it buffers, I'm sorry, guys. Um, Deep South, your home is so beautiful. And, and you had a construction background. Did you find that you could build cheaper than having somebody else do it for you? Page. Um, and how much time Jocelyn. did it take you to build them? Jocelyn just typed in to say hi to you. So she's saying hi. We had so much fun with them. It was so amazing. Sorry, Jocelyn. I'll tell Kaya too, but she's outside. Uh, let's see. So Doug and Stacy built theirs. Yeah. Space is the last frontier in Alaska. It's pretty well popular, right? And you paid cash for them. Okay, guys. So for Doug and Stacy and also for, also for Danny at Deep South Homestead, how much are you willing to tell us how much you paid for you know you put your own labor into building your home but how much did it cost you to build your homes how well insulated are they um, the the best price that I've seen as far as like see the book mortgage free I think I have that do you didn't, have that one? Have that one Paul I says go get one. the book mortgage free and I think that's part of the the point of what everybody in like the homestead type movement is is to to be able to disconnect from that mothership of debt and so that you can live your life the way you want to you're not just constantly funneling money into this box that you live in or this box that you drive in to go pay for this box that you live in and so I think you know self-education is the best way to live less expensively is to is to learn from the people that have already done it yeah so that you know you're doing it safely yeah. and uh, in reality we are there is more material out there thanks to the internet than ever before yeah. to be able to do this this sort of thing i mean paul is a great example you know uh the homestead network here is a great example um there's just people all over the place saying look this is how i've done it i would love to share this message and just and, ripe for the taking. And that, that in turn is what creates your residual income. If you want to be able to, Paul and I talked about this in the podcast that we did, um, about us retiring at the age of 36. How do you retire at the age of 36? Well, you take what you've learned in life and you, you turn it into a video or you turn it into a blog or you turn it into some kind of article somewhere. You put it up online. You put a little AdSense banner on it or you monetize it on YouTube. And if you get enough of these articles together, of these things you've learned in life, it becomes an income. And so not only is it blessing other people because they don't have to make the mistakes that you made, but on top of that, it starts to bless you because you become known for whatever it is you're an expert at. It's, it's really neat. Storm Shelter wants to disconnect from the dollar entirely. Yeah, we're, we're working on that ourselves. I think we've kind of taken a little bit of a hiatus from working on it. But yeah, I think that's kind of where we all really want to get to, is to be completely disconnected from... BC Truck, did you build your own home too? That says it's 1,800 square feet for $70,000 in 1990. I don't know. And then Danny... Theirs is 2,200 square feet. See, Danny's home is absolutely beautiful. It is a work of art. It is so beautiful. Um, 
Yeah, there are property taxes, and that's unfortunate. You know, the property taxes, they can just take your feet right out from under you. If you go up to Sun Valley um, mm -hmm. in, in uh, Idaho, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's a problem because the McMansions from California have come in, the, the big mansions, and they've made it so that the farmers and, and the little people around them can't afford their property taxes because their properties were so much more because all these rich people have come in, and, and that, that can take your feet out from under you. So, uh, ah, where did it go? Doug and Stacy it said fifteen thousand dollars for your little cabin. I don't know how to go. Well, up. Grandpa's farm said about eighty dollars a square foot. Yeah, conventional building will cost that, but uh, I mean, you you can look at a dollar a square foot, you know, with one of these Wafatis that Paul's making. So, yeah, and off grid with Doug and Stacy. Uh, Doug retired at forty three. So. so all these people have come at it from a different direction and a lot of the people on here started with jobs that made a lot of money yeah. like um, Paul was uh, an IT guy he was a uh, uh, with NASA or something wasn't it and nope, it wasn't at NASA it wasn't at NASA it was in the aerospace industry though. was it um, and I mean Paul made a lot of money and Doug he had his own landscaping business and um, Danny was in construction weren't you I mean, people that made a lot of money and decided, you know what, life isn't just about the money. I, well, I, yeah, you the, know, the money, the money just makes you further anchored to the system, which keeps you in the rat race that much longer. Yeah. As, so, so if instead you live doing beautiful <laughs> things with your life in nature, right. and you find a way to make a small enough income that the government doesn't care about you as much anymore right. and that you but you can pay your bills right. well in fact and there's another way, place um, and I don't necessarily agree with everything that he has but there's another podcast and it's called the rich dad podcast from Robert Kiyosaki and he will talk about um, how to be unique in your system he, he uses debt a lot more than I would ever feel comfortable with and because debt keeps you tethered I don't necessarily want to go that way but again going back to the knowledge that is just available for the taking yeah so let's see software engineer that's what it was sorry about that aerospace see and you know I I to me it the the goal for us in the end is to have everything paid off and have a, a residual income that allows us to take care of our family and then when we feel like we need more income coming in we do a special project that brings more income in I mean as I don't know I I know that I keep coming back to Paul <laughs> but I no. don't know any I don't know anybody else <laughs> that's doing it out there successfully to the same degree um, and and so I do. I keep coming back to Paul. He has Wheaton Labs, and he's made, he's doing all these things that he really believes in. And when he has found that the money for a project is has been put to what it's supposed to be, and he finds this new project that he wants to create, he has done such a good job in delivering on on his past Kickstarters that when he finds a new project that needs to be developed, he does another Kickstarter and there's the money for the project let's go um, because he's built credibility um, they're popping up all over in Oregon yes I, I don't think we'll end up in Oregon it is kind of a stopping just kind of a stop through um, beautiful state I love your uh, greenery over there but unfortunately I don't think that we could ever stop and make a new homestead in Oregon because of the control and the laws and the costs like taxes. Okay, I used to have a six-figure income when I was an owner-operator, but I was miserable. Oh, yeah. 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 Fourteen-hour days of driving. What? Yeah, that'll do that. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, and that's why I love this community and why it's so much fun to go out and see people. You refer to who you're talking about. Uh, I was uh Danny. I well, I was just looking at oh, Danny and looking at off-grid. I was just um. YouTubers, YouTube, B E R S. That is inspirational news, Deep South Homestead. So that's what I was thinking about. Is it's so? It's you know, I felt so much like we were in a hole at home. 
wanting so much to reach out and and see everybody else that we love on YouTube and physically give hugs because sometimes the internet is fantastic but sometimes you need to go see what other people are doing and say yeah they really did it look mm -hmm. at how amazing they are and wanting to get the news out about some you know some people um, they don't get their news out onto YouTube they've got or, or onto Facebook or whatever they're they're kind of in their little hidey hole and they stay there nobody knows what amazing things they're doing mm -hmm. and so this is like a search and not search and destroy that would be the wrong one <laughs> Search and bring to the search light. And, search and settle. Yeah, that's what it is. It's trying to get people that are that are here that may not have the same microphone that we have, and because everybody there's lots of people with amazing stuff, and a lot of it needs to come out. So. Okay, I better get started on dinner. Uh, okay. Well, Zach says settle in Northwest Florida. Well, they get Trish gets the longest shot, and I guess she's somewhere up there. So we'll try that. Anyway, okay. So any of you who are willing off. to host us, please go to dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com. It makes a huge difference in how far we can go and how many places we can visit if we have host families so that we're not having to spend $30 a night on RVs and having to drive as far. Um, and, and so, we, and we would really just like to see you. And guys. we would love to shake hands and give hugs and see the amazing things you're doing. So, dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com. And our new time is Thursdays at 4 o'clock. You guys already figured that out. 6 Eastern.